And welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael Delon, and today I am talking with Dorothy Kolb. And Dor well, Dorothy, first of all, thanks for being with me. Thanks for oh, my pleasure. Time. My pleasure. It is going to be a great conversation. So, Dorothy is a fractional chief financial officer for small business owners. She's also a small business strategist. So, so you put those two together and you got a pretty powerful combination. I'm looking forward, Dorothy, just to, to help you, uh, to, to help unpack that for our audience and where they're struggling, how you can help them, things of that nature. But before we get there, let me ask you, how in the world did you get to doing what you do today? Interesting story. I never intended to. I had no intention of being an entrepreneur. I thought I would spend my entire career working for corporate America. Um, corporate America did not agree. <laughs> <laughs> and my last, my last CFO job I got laid off from, they were, but as a CFO of any company, you can see the writing on the wall. So yeah. it was more a matter of when, not if, and it just, but it's still not any less shocking, right? And I'm a single mom of four, and I was scared to death of what am I going to do now? I had been working, actually, I had been working remotely since 2013. So this company was yeah. way ahead of its time, yeah. as far as that goes. And the, you know, with four kids at home, um, I think they were between 11 and 15 at the time. You know, that's the time where you kind of need to be around more so than even when they're small, because anybody can tell you can change a diaper, tell them to get that out of your mouth, whatever. When you've got teenagers, it's a little bit different. Yep. And the thought of being gone from the house from seven o'clock in the morning till seven, seven thirty at night, which is what I had been in my last like, you know, in person job. I was like, I can't do that, man. And not as a single parent. Right. And so I just. I just like, I'm going to have to do this. And I went on Upwork, believe yeah. it or not. And I got a couple of bookkeeping jobs. I got a bookkeeping job, actually, the first one. And as a very seasoned CFO, it was a bit humbling to take that kind of a job. But, you know, you have to do what you have to do. Um, and then I got another job that was more like a controller level job, also remote. I still have that client today. It's been about six years. Awesome. And then people just started to get, oh, wait a minute, you're not a bookkeeper. You're actually, you do these things. And so I, I start, they started referring me. They didn't necessarily take me on for those roles, right. but they referred me, hey, I know somebody who needs exactly what you have. And it just built. And I got through the first year and I thought, oh my gosh, this actually kind of works. Um, I think I'm going to do this. So I was able to just take it from there. And it's been built entirely on referral, entirely, no outbound, nothing. Um, and I've been lucky so far that. that yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, and having been just, you know, you were talking about my niche down and, or we were talking earlier about my niche yeah. down into women owned businesses. I worked in um, entertainment and broadcasting and very male dominated industries. And I didn't want to be in that anymore. And even the women that I had worked with in that, they weren't very supportive or collaborative either because there were so few seats that they were shoving everybody else yeah. away. Wow. And so when I got out into this world, I originally thought, I don't want to work with women. They're awful, right? <laughs> but women <laughs> entrepreneurs are like me. Different. They're like, yeah. I didn't want that either. This is what I want now. And they're collaborative and supportive and we work well together. And so I want to help them get as much, much success and sustainable business that they can so that we can all like, you know, have a better life. I mean, yeah. that's, that sounds like the broad Miss Universe, you know, answer. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, but it, it's so, it's so true because as, as entrepreneurs, we, most of us are visionaries. Right. And and we want to go out and start doing something to, to impact the world and, and to stay in our sweet spot. Most of the time for entrepreneurs, finance is not our sweet spot. But yeah. we have to put that hat on and it's it it does a lot of things. It, it demotivates us. It puts us in, as I say, prison because it's not my strong suit. I know it has to be done. And it takes me away from what I'm great at, which limits the ability of my business to grow. Right. So that hints why we need somebody like you to come in and, and partner with us to help us. So talk a little bit about how how you help entrepreneurs and business owners on, on that aspect. But I want to I want to talk about your strategy. And, and if you want to weave those all together, what is it that you bring to the table? And, and how, how do you help those entrepreneurs just really take that next step by 
helping them escape prison in a sense. If I, if yeah, I, dare I love that. that. I don't want to tell them that because then it makes me feel like I'm the, <laughs> the prison warden or something. The prison warden of finance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe that's my new TikTok handle. There you um, go. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because I work with PR and comms, communications firms and creatives almost entirely. And they are never, this is always either they're not good at it or they're terrified of the numbers or they just hate it so much. They don't, they want to ignore, avoid, ignore, avoid. And really you can't move your business forward if you don't know what what's happening and numbers do not lie. And that's the other thing that scares people is that numbers do not lie. You can certainly tweak the story and spin it in a certain way to make it, you know, if you're heading towards, you know, investors or lenders or something like that, but for you internally, they're going to get tell you the absolute truth. And that's hard to see, right? Because even when you're, you're younger, and you're looking at your checkbook, and you're like, Oh, my gosh, like I have rent to pay, and I have a dollar 50 left in my well, nobody yeah. uses a checkbook anymore. My bank account. <laughs> <laughs> but if you know, have a dollar 50, or I've had my own sons, I have like $7 and 47 cents in my checking account until I get paid. And it's like, I, I it's scary to look at. But what I do is I come in and I, I, I think the biggest the biggest issue is people don't know how, and I don't mean not just how to interpret numbers, but how do, how do I look at them so that I can absorb this? Yeah. Sometimes it's spreadsheets, great. A lot of times it's not. Yeah. Sometimes it's charts and graphs. Sometimes it's a discussion, like what is happening in my business. Just tell me. Yeah. You know, just have the, the the talk talk to me about it. And so I try to approach it with what makes sense to you. Do you want us to just have a conversation and I just tell you, hey, look, your profits are down or your, you know, your operating expenses are up and here's what, do you want me to give it to you in a concrete form? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to give it to you in a pretty graph so you can see where things are going weird? Yeah. And so it, it, the first step is understanding what speaks to you mm -hmm. so that you can kind of wrap your head around these numbers. Just like I can't look at, you know, certain market, I have a marketing consultant. She tells me stuff that I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have no yeah. idea what you're talking about. Yeah. What is the difference between branding and marketing? I don't know. You know, she corrects me every time. Yeah. Um, but so it's it's getting it in a way that you go, oh, okay, okay, I get it. And I work, I work with, I've worked with hundreds of women. I work with the Tory Birch Foundation right now, with a whole program of fellows in that in there. And they have these amazing businesses and they just don't understand how well or how not well they're doing. Yeah. So you know, it's, it's getting that part down first, and then it's really dedicating the time to it of let's look at these things every month. Let's figure out every month what, you know, what has changed and not just like, this is my biggest, my biggest advice to anyone is don't just look at like often bookkeepers will give you, here's your financials for this month, right? Yeah. And it's just January or March or yeah. And you're looking at one little silo of information. Always look at it all the way across. If it's the last 12 months, great. If it's year to date, whatever, but by month, because that's the only way that you can see the trends yeah. of what's going trends. up. And down. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, and, and, and those trends are so important because most businesses have, you know, high months and low months because they're, they're a little cyclical, right? And to know that you're coming into a high season or a low, uh, you know, the next two months are traditionally low revenue for us, right? What do we do? Do we have enough cash? Do we have a, you plan for it when you see the numbers, when you're not just looking at a month and, and a data point to go, okay, great. And Or just looking at your bank account. I have other people who do that. They just look at their bank account. I've got money in it. I'm good. Yeah. yeah, you've got payroll coming up next week, and that's forty thousand yeah. dollars or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Well, and 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 um, we we implemented, and and I was I was that guy a few years ago. Okay, um, we implemented profit first, and yep. we put that in. And here's the coolest thing: my wife's my bookkeeper, right? We've got a CPA too, but we came to tax time, and my wife is like, oh, you know, we owe twenty eight thousand dollars of taxes. And she went to profit first and went to the category that says taxes. And guess what? We had $32,000 in there because we've been saving for it. And yep. she's like, oh, this is awesome. Because before it was like, ah, how do we? Ooh. But when you have a system like, like you bring to the table and you've got somebody like Dorothy who's watching it, monitoring it and making it make sense. I still don't understand. My wife has to tell me over and over again, the difference, you know, when I look at the net profit number on my P&L, I'm like, oh, that's good. She's like, no, 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 no. Because we have a balance sheet thing over here and that's distributions and those have to get taken out of this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I love your wife. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh, she's she's amazing. But I'm like, oh. so we need people like Dorothy in our business because as entrepreneurs, 
I've, I've built my company, Dorothy. We, I, all right, my audience knows this. You don't know this. I'm good at four things in life. That's it. Okay, I'm wicked good at these four things. Outside of that, I'm mediocre at best. <laughs> You're lying. Finance, <laughs> or, finance <laughs> is definitely mediocre at best. So I bring people to the table and hire them and, and let them do all of those things I'm not great at because I'm really good at, at marketing and, and podcast and interview. That's where I, that's where I spend all my day. And if you, and that's where you, you're good at and you enjoy it. And that's where you should be spending your time. Absolutely. But it, it takes courage to hire somebody like you and to see it's not an expense. Every time I've hired anybody and trained them well, my revenues and profits have gone up because I'm not doing it. And that's what I want to encourage my audience is you, you need, listen to what Dorothy's saying. And at the end, we'll tell you how to get a hold, reach out to her talk with her because if you're an entrepreneur and you're dabbling in finance you're probably not in your area of strength and your business is being limited because you don't know what to look for so i'm going to i'm going to shut up but well you know and the other thing is that if even if you might be good at it is it taking time away from you building your business on what you you know you should really be doing like it's not always outsourcing because you just can't do it. Sometimes it's outsourcing because your best and highest use is oh, absolutely. entirely different. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and, and the other thing I want entrepreneurs to understand, because I'm, I run with entrepreneurs, right? We're always after <clears throat> my business grew 38% top line revenue. I really don't care. I'm interested as an entrepreneur in bottom line net profit. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. They don't understand how much money is lost between gross revenues and net profit. Dorothy understands that. She can show you. <laughs> and, and it's amazing when you plug two or three holes in your business, your net profit goes up without spending another dime. Absolutely. Wow. But it takes somebody like Dorothy to figure that out because I can't see it. It's I don't amazing. want to see it. It's amazing sometimes when people, they, they have like a great top line. I'm making a million dollars a year in top line revenue. Fantastic. But I've got like, you know, $900,000 of direct costs going against that because it's really just money going in and out. And then they're wondering why they have a loss because they also have, you know, $250,000 right. in payroll costs or something like that. Yeah. But it, it's interesting just to have people, one of the biggest eye openers is, is looking at that gross margin line. Oh yeah. Percentage, right? So my gross margin is 50%, whatever. Right. It's a thousand dollars, it's a $10 million, whatever. It's 50%, let's say. And then looking at how much your operating expenses are as a percentage of that top line revenue, if that's more than 50%, you're going to have a loss. Yeah. And it's amazing how people go, oh, <laughs> yes. And that's what Profit First teaches you, right? That's always, I always, I always sell that, 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 um, formula they have, which is sales minus profit e equals expenses so that you're only budgeting and having expenses after you've considered the, the main thing that you're in business for probably, it, which is the profit. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I told you before we got on this podcast that I'm a big fan, right? Of, of chief financial officers. And it's just, so, it, it helps so much to have a handle on the money to know your numbers and to be able to make tweaks to go, hmm, I wonder if we should do this mm -hmm. and make a $25,000 investment. Well, maybe let's talk about it. And do I even have the money and all of those things. And it's so the, the numbers do drive it and entrepreneurs. We just typically don't like them. And all we hear is you have to have a dashboard. You have to have your KPIs. You have to have all this stuff. And it just goes, <laughs> I don't know how to create that. I don't want to create it. I don't even know what numbers to put on my KPI. And Dorothy's like, I got it. What do you want? I'll, I'll show you in, in, in a form or fashion. What do you want? So think about, here, here, here's how I think, Dorothy. Most, if I think of the big companies that have CEOs and CFOs and COOs and things, the CEO is not operating in the day-to-day -day business. Usually they have people, right? Yep. And they have a finance person they go to. That's how entrepreneurs need to think. Now, we're, we're not all there. Some of us are solopreneurs. You become a larger business when you start effectively delegating. And I think finance is one of those. I think marketing is a great place many times to yeah. delegate when you oversee it. And then finance is another great place because those two deal with what? Money. Mm -hmm. money, money drives the thing. So how, what? tell me, before I get to how do people get a hold of you, what are some of the, the internal struggles that your 
clients are dealing with before they come to you. So it's, it's an entrepreneur out there. She's running a business. She's a consultant. She's a whatever. And she something inside of her is going, ah, I, I, I'm just not. What, what is she feeling before she reaches out to you that says, I, I need some help? Typically very frustrated. And typically what you were talking about before, your wife is the bookkeeper and you have a CPA. That mm -hmm. is exactly where most fractional CFOs go, oh, I know what you're missing. Your bookkeeper does your transactional work. Mm -hmm. Your wife might do more, more towards the CFO stuff. She sounds very, very smart with the yeah. advice she's giving you so far. But um, your bookkeeper does your transactional work day after day, the, the, everything that comes through your bank account, your credit cards, accounts payable, you know, paying bills, paying invoice, getting invoices, sending invoices out, all that. That's your bookkeeper. Your CPA is looking at things from a tax perspective. How do we minimize your tax liability? How do we write as much stuff as we can off without getting you in trouble so that you will have a minimum, so that that $28,000 becomes $20,000, right? That's what they're looking at. The gap in the middle is someone to help you with strategy because your CPA, both, and typically someone will go to either one of those people and get frustrated that they can't help them because your CPA is going to go, I I just do your taxes. You don't want to pay my rate for that kind of, your bookkeeper's going, I would love to, but I have no idea. This is out of my wheelhouse. And so a CFO, a fractional CFO comes in and goes, yeah, I can help you to figure out how to get from A to B to C to D and what we need to look at, what, what revenue streams, where can we cut costs? What we want to make an investment in something. Can we, are you managing your business by looking at your bank account instead of looking at projections going forward? Like, you know, like I was talking about before, I got, you know, big payroll next week, but, oh, I just made a big, you know, big purchase today because I thought I had money in the bank. All those things, CPA, I mean, uh, CFOs, I am a CPA too, but yeah. recovering. Um, <laughs> but those are the things, the strategy part of it to look at how am I going to grow this or scale this or sustain it doesn't have to be all about growth. Everybody's all about growth, oh, growth, growth. Yeah. It doesn't. It's perfectly fine to say, I am good with where my business is, but is it going to stay this way? Right. You know? And what do I have to do to make sure it does? Yeah. So that's where a CFO would come in. Absolutely. I love that. Um, so a number of years ago, I'll tell you, this is the sustaining part, right? So we were in business. I don't know. I've been in business 11 years now. So this is probably like year two or three. I don't know. We hired a marketing consultant to help us grow and spent money on him, spent money on the ads, and it didn't have the return. And so I, I looked at my, I, I just knew intuitively something's, something's going to give, right? So I built a spreadsheet and I called it the paperback expert go broke date spreadsheet because I knew I was on a bad trend. And I looked and I thought, okay, I probably have six or seven months here. <clears throat> no, I had three. Oh, and I said, oh my goodness. So I, I did what nobody wants to do is I, is I went and looked and I laid off myself because I was the biggest expense my business had at that time. And for three, three months, I went and got a J-O-B, right? I went back to prison, but I had to, to sustain the business. By God's grace, the business came back. I escaped from prison, came back to my business and all has been well because I realized the mistake I made and how to, how to rectify it. And making sure I knew the numbers, making sure I wasn't overspending, making sure I was getting return on my investments and all of those things. But it took that for me to go to wake me up to go, oh, time out. Sustainability is key. It so is. I'm always looking for how do I maximize revenue and minimize expenses? How do I how do I do that while delivering a top quality product to my clients? Yeah, that's a big budgeting mistake a lot of people make. They say, I'm gonna grow my revenue by 20%. And then I'll just grow my expenses by 20%. No, yeah. no. You want that gap to be bigger and bigger and bigger. That's right. That's right. Because then your net profit goes like, stay. no, I want net profit. I'm just why I'm in business. I'm sorry. Work. I you like money. I like to do things. You do more work and end up with the same exact bottom line. That's right. That'd be That's terrible. fun. <laughs> um, anyway. All right. We've, we have talked about a ton. And Dorothy, I think we've just scratched the surface, honestly. Um, I think we could go on for another hour or two because I'm passionate about what you do <laughs> and, and the way you go about it. I loved your gap analogy there with bookkeeping and versus CPA. You stand in the middle and you bring those two worlds together to go, let's build some strategy so that we actually make sense and make some progress and see how we can get you some more net profit at the end of the day as a business owner and reduce a lot of stress, a lot of hassle, keep you in your sweet spot and work together. Is that, is that a fair summary? That is a fair summary. 
All right. How in the world, Dorothy, do people find you? How where would they go to get more information, more help, schedule a call? What do you what do you offer? What where do they go? Well, always my website, which is dkeast.com. Um, I am on uh LinkedIn under Dorothy Kolb. I'm on TikTok, believe it or not, much to my son's dismay. Oh. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm also on Instagram, but I don't feel like anybody goes to Instagram for business. Yeah. I mean, you should really shouldn't be. Um, <laughs> but I also have an online digital course that start, that's launching next month. That's called Own Your Financials, which will take you through all of it. It's, it's relatively basic, but it does give, you know, because we don't want to overwhelm people. Yeah. But it does give you what are these financial statements? What the heck are we using them for? And how can I use them? for my own business ratios and metrics and things that will just give you like an idea of how you're performing against, you know, general, you know, good guidelines and things like that. Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm going to put um, in the, in the um, show notes, I'm going to put those in. I'm going to have your LinkedIn thing. DKEast.com is the website. I'll have that in there and look for that digital course and maybe start there or maybe start with the conversation, but find Dorothy. And just figure out if if she th- do you resonate with her? Does this conversation even make sense? Are you feeling that frustration, that angst? Do you have the bookkeeper and the CPA, but you don't have the CFO? Do you need some help with numbers? That if, if you answered yes to any of those questions, let me encourage you to reach out to Dorothy, dkeast.com. As you can tell, she's a fun lady and um, <laughs> she's not high pressure sales. So this is cool. I'm not. <laughs> But uh, reach out to her. (laughs) That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, So dkeast.com. Dorothy Culp, thank you so much. This has been a great conversation. A lot of gems in here for people. And um, I know that you'll do great, great work when you reach out to Dorothy. She's going to help you create the business and the life you really, really want by understanding your numbers. So Dorothy, thank you. It's, It's been a joy. Thank you so much. It was great.